A futuristic city with no rivers, no lakes, and no groundwater. That's Neon. And yet, it plans to supply over 6 million cubic meters of fresh water every single day, entirely through solar-powered desalination. But here's the catch. Solar desal has never been done at this scale. In a desert this harsh, with zero liquid discharge into the sea, the Red Sea, home to the planet's last climate-resilient corals, is at risk of being choked by hot, dense brine and chemical runoff if even one system fails. One cancelled project has already cost one and a half billion, so the question is, can NEOM actually build a water system that works before the damage is irreversible? NEOM is Saudi Arabia's $500 billion gamble on the future. A city designed to rise out of the desert, powered by renewable energy, driven by AI, and most importantly, completely self-efficient. But here's the twist. All of this ambition hinges on something you probably take for granted every day. Fresh water. And for Neon, producing that water is turning into one of its toughest engineering puzzles yet. The vision sounds good. Use solar-powered desalination to convert seawater into drinkable water without dumping waste back into the Red Sea. Sounds brilliant! But when you zoom into the tech, the engineering, and the environmental impact, well, the cracks start to show up pretty bad. Now, Neon kicked things off with a splash in 2020 when it signed a deal with the UK-based Solar Water PLC to build the world's first solar dome desalination plant. The idea? Use concentrated solar power to heat seawater under a giant glass dome. The heat evaporates the water, separates out the salt, and leaves behind fresh water. It was supposed to be low-cost, carbon-free, and easy on the environment. They claimed it would cost less than 34 cents per cubic feet of water, a big drop from the 50 cents to one dollar per cubic meter that you usually see with reverse osmosis plants. They also promised that brine, the salty byproduct, would be extracted and reused, which is great instead of dumped into the ocean. But here's the problem, guys. Scaling solar desalination to supply a futuristic mega city is not easy. Neom wants to eventually serve over 9 million people and run massive industrial zones like Oxagon. That means water demand will go up to around 6 million cubic meters per day. Even the first planned phase aimed for 500,000 cubic meters daily, which is already a huge challenge for solar tech. Producing that much water with solar alone means building an energy infrastructure that doesn't exist yet. You're talking about sprawling solar arrays, batteries for nighttime storage, and a power system that can run 24-7 in a desert with frequent dust storms, extreme heat, and no natural water source. And it gets worse. The solar dome, which was supposed to be operational by the end of 2020, quietly faded into the background. <laughs> no public updates on that one. No commissioning data. Nothing to suggest it actually delivered. Nothing to suggest that it actually delivered. Instead, Neon pivoted to something more conventional. They partnered with Japan's Itochu and Francis Viola to build a $1.5 billion desalination plant in Oxagon. Powered entirely by renewables, the plant was supposed to produce 2 million cubic meters of water per day at full capacity, with the first phase coming online in 2024. But in 2024, the plan was quietly scrapped. The joint development agreement expired. Neom said their water needs had evolved. Translation, the project was too expensive, too complicated, or too risky to move forward. Huh, why don't you look at that? So now Neom says it'll go step by step, scaling capacity in smaller chunks. That's a smart move given the challenges, but it also means delays, and delays means Neom's most basic utility, fresh water, is still a big unknown. So let's break down the biggest technical roadblocks. First, solar power is intermittent. The sun doesn't shine at night, and in desert climates, sand and heat degrade solar panels faster. That forces Neom to rely on expensive batteries or thermal storage to keep the desalination plants running 24-7. Second, solar domes and other solar distillation tech are unproven at megacity scale. Neom needs to scale them up massively, but the tech has never been tested on this level, which means a huge risk. Third, materials and maintenance in desert climates are a nightmare. You got salt, sand, humidity, corrode pipes, and clogged filters, and all of that reduces efficiency fast. Every system has to be over-engineered just to survive the environment. Fourth, wouldn't you believe it, there's a fourth, integrating the entire system. It all has to work together. Solar farms, water pipelines, high voltage transmission lines, and storage tanks is its own engineering monster. If one part does not work, the whole system gets delayed. Which brings us to the bigger question. Even if Neom nails the tech, what happens to all the wasted salt? That brings us back to the pilot projects. Neom's solar dome was supposed to prove the concept. They even branded it as the world's first zero emission desalination solution. But instead of showcasing success, the dome went quiet. 
There's been no public data about how much water it produced or whether it hit efficiency targets, and the silence is telling us everything. Experts believe that either the cost per cubic meter was higher than expected, or the system didn't actually scale properly, or the brine disposal wasn't as clean as promised. Meanwhile, the Oxagon plant was supposed to be the centerpiece. It collapsed before even starting. One and a half billion dollar plan to build a mega scale reverse osmosis plant, fully renewable powered, and with zero brine discharge, just poof, disappeared. The deal expired. Neom said nothing beyond vague language about changing requirements. Now, the patent reveals the core issue. Neom has leaned heavily on experimental technologies, advanced membranes, AI optimized water networks, and mineral recovery systems. Sounds great on paper, but carry enormous engineering risks in real life. And to make things more complicated, the political environment has not helped. In 2024, a UK-based renewable energy entrepreneur publicly pulled out of a $100 million solar desalination project with NEO, citing human rights concerns. That really shook investor confidence, even if the tech worked. NEOM still has to win over global partners willing to bet big money on it. So now, the new approach is a smaller scale phase development. It might reduce risk, but it also means NEOM's water independence will take longer, maybe much longer than planned. Every desalination plant produces brine. That's the super salty, mineral rich waste left after seawater is processed. Normally, this gets dumped back into the sea, but Neom says it's going to do something radical achieve zero liquid discharge. That means capturing all the brine, processing it, and turning it into usable raw materials. Think sodium chloride, potassium, magnesium, even lithium salts for batteries. Sounds great instead of polluting the sea. Awesome. And Neom wants to mine its waste for profit. It's a smart idea, but in practice, it is very hard. Very few desalination facilities in the world run on ZLD. The process involves evaporators, crystallizers, and a ton of energy to boil away the water and leave behind dry salt. Neon would need to power this using solar or wind, which adds even more strain to the renewable energy grid. And then there's volume, even if Neon ever hits 6 million cubic meters of water per day. That could mean over 1.5 million cubic meters of brine daily. That's enough salty sludge to fill 600 Olympic pools every single day. The plan is to process this brine in industrial zones like Oxagon, where it can feed downstream chemical factors. But that's assuming the demand exists. If the minerals extracted aren't profitable, or processing costs stay high, Neom could be stuck with mountains of salt and nowhere to put it. And here's the kicker. If the ZLD tech fails or breaks down, Neom has two options. Halt desalination or discharge it into the Red Sea. Either way, it's a mess. So engineers are building redundancies, multiple evaporators, backup systems, but all of this costs more and more and takes longer and longer and it eats up land and energy. Neom wants to turn a waste stream into an industry. If they can extract valuable minerals at scale, they might create a new model for sustainable desalination, which is amazing. But that's a huge if right now. The Red Sea isn't just a beautiful backdrop for Neom. It's one of the most unique marine ecosystems on the planet. Its northern waters, especially near Neom, are home to corals that can survive higher temperatures, better than anywhere else. Scientists even call them super corals, and now they're under threat. Neom's coastline is being transformed. Ports, bridges, resorts, and desalination plants are under construction, with every dig, dredge, or discharge. There's a risk to coral reefs, seagrass beds, and marine life. A 2025 modeling study showed that fine sediments from Neom's coastal works could travel over 200 kilometers, settling on reefs or blocking sunlight that would choke coral or kill algae that they rely on. Another study exposed Red Sea coral to water with just 10% more salinity and a trace of desalination chemicals. Result, up to 90% of their beneficial bacteria die. Growth rates drop the coral started to bleach. Brine is dense and hot. When dumped, it sinks and can create dead zones on the sea floor. Oxygen levels drop, fish disappear, seagrass dies. It's a mess. Even if Neom sticks to its zero discharge goal, accidents happen, pipes leak, things break sometimes, storms could overflow containment ponds. That's why marine biologists are warning that Neom could damage the last climate resilient coral reefs left on Earth. On Earth! Saudi Arabia has launched a Red Sea sustainability strategy aiming to protect 
30% of the coastline. Niam also says it's conducting marine research and building protected zones. But scientists are pushing for more real-time water monitoring, strict discharge controls, and independent oversight. The Red Sea is shared by multiple countries. If one project ruins it, everyone pays the price. That's why experts say Niam's brine management isn't just a local issue, it's regional. Niam's water plan isn't just complex, it's very, very expensive. The one and a half billion dollar Oxagon plant was just phase one. Getting to full capacity will likely require over six billion in water infrastructure alone, not including energy, pipelines, and storage. But delays are piling up. The Oxagon plant cancellation means Niam needs a backup fast. Anti-salination is a foundational utility. No water, no construction, no population growth, no tourism. Every delay in desal means a delay in everything else. Now, part of the problem is tied to advanced technology. Using zero discharge systems, building mineral processing factories, and powering everything with solar and wind is not cheap. It's one thing to build a regular desal plant. It's another to build one that also mines lithium. Then you've got logistics, that too. Neom is remote. Every pipe, pump, and panel has to be shipped in. Roads, ports, and housing had to be built first just to get started. That's millions in sunk costs before water even flows. And then global inflation, supply chain bottlenecks, and rising material costs have all pushed prices up. Stainless steel for high pressure pipes, special membranes, custom solar tracking systems, everything is more expensive than when Neom was introduced. So Neom is rightly shifting a strategy. Instead of one giant leap, it's now focused on smaller modules. Each phase can be tested, refined, and improved. Yes, this helps control risk, but it slows everything down. This is where it all ties together now, though. Neom wants to build a city of the future, admirable, but it can't function without sustainable water. Right now, that's still up in the air. If Neom nails its water strategy, it becomes a model for desert cities everywhere. Clean water, zero emissions, no pollution, and a new industry built on brine. That's a powerful, powerful story to tell the world. But if it fails, if the desal plants fall short or brine overwhelms the system or environmental damage sparks backlash, then Neom's entire identity is at risk. It would be seen as a beacon of not sustainability. But as a warning, water is the foundation. You get it wrong, everything built on top of it cracks and is ruined. Now, if you want to keep tracking whether Neom can solve this crisis before it runs dry, hit the like button, subscribe, drop your thoughts down in the comments.